So thanks to Austin's great idea of using the car jack, even with two people, it was hard, wouldn't you say? Yeah. <laughs> so we have this problem where the oven is shutting off at random. This is a Frigidaire Professional double oven. A lot of these Frigidaires are actually made by Electrolux. And the part that we have here is a thermal shutoff valve or thermal cutout. If it senses things are getting too hot, it just shuts the power off. And I think that's what's bad on it because there's only a couple things that could go wrong. This right here is a temperature sensor. If this is bad, then you know, then the temperature could be off or, but we're not having any other issues with temperature. This issue is the thing completely shuts off by itself. So it's gotta have something to do with fuse or safety, like a safety shut off. So that's why I've, I got that part and I'm gonna show you how to replace it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take these doors off. And I, you're gonna take your screwdriver in here on both sides. There we go. How about that? Let's see, now where am I gonna put this? On the counter. That hurt my ears. Okay, well. But this time, we are going to slide everything out, but it's gonna be screwed into, yeah, right up here. There's screws into the cabinet that hold it in. Before we go any further, we need to shut the power of this off because we don't wanna be moving things and messing with things with live power. So we're looking for range and that should correspond to right here. The part that we need is actually on the back of the oven. see where we just we had to angle it in order to get it past these little notches and then the dolly almost uh, a dolly that's laid down flat is perfect to set it on the markings. All right, let me just make sure I get my markings the same. Okay. Put this right back in the same holes. That's done. Slide in. 
So we had this issue where the oven wouldn't go all the way in. So it turns out that this was just bunching up, up inside of there behind the oven. So once I pulled this oven power down and fished it through the wall, then the oven went back. So as you're putting the oven in, the lesson there is just to make sure that you're pulling the power cord so it doesn't get all hung up in the back. We'll give it a few days and then uh, if it still has a problem, then we're looking at a main board. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. We finished part install and we ran it for another few weeks and unfortunately it, the problem still happened. So the first step is to replace that thermal cutoff switch. The second step is to replace the relay board. There's two circuit boards in here. There's a relay board that basically turns on and off various components. And then there's a circuit board that controls the, uh, the panel here. So here's the part, I got it directly from Electrolux and it looks like this. <clears throat> so one of the relays on here, you know, probably one of these bigger ones, I don't know, is actually the problem. So we do the same, same sort of thing, but the good news is we won't have to actually take the oven completely out to do this. Our power is off. Okay. Now we can just slide this, pull this out. All right. Okay, as you can see, we got our circuit board is just right there, just sitting there waiting for us to uh, remove it. Okay, let's see. So I got it off these little pedestals. Ooh, this transformer's hot. This thing wasn't even running. <laughs> Clock will be uh, about five seconds ahead. That seems to be working. Let's power the bottom on. So we just powered both top and bottom. You hear those clicks? That's the relay working. So, all right. So it's been a week, and we've gone through multiple cooks in the oven, and we haven't had any single problem. Whereas before, we were having consistent problems. So I'm going to say this problem is officially fixed. The part was about a $220 plus tax part. I looked at what the replacement cost of this oven would be, and uh, since this is a convection oven and a stainless steel, it's looking at a minimum of around $3,500. So $250 is a pretty good price, I think, for um, for fixing it yourself uh, and just to keep it going. So thanks for watching. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> it's all greasy. So, first lesson is the door has got a spring on it, 
So you actually have to release the tension before you take the door off. <laughs> As I learned, I got a, just a small cut as well. It's just, I think it's just heavier than I thought it was. Yeah, it's heavier than 150 pounds. Oh dear lord. What just happened? That's better. Oh, it's so, it's so hard to lift. Oh.